Best moment playing with Z was our, our trip to the finals in 07. Uh, I believe he was a, a main factor and a key for us, winning a lot of ball games, and that's one of my most memorable mem memories of him. You know, Z, we kind of go full circle, and of course your family, Jennifer, and your two beautiful boys, and this is your home, Cleveland. As you talk about that, that loyalty, here you are back here uh, with, with Dan Gilbert in the Cavaliers, in the front office as an assistant uh, uh, in the general manager's office. Uh, your thoughts about today's life for you and your family in, in Cleveland, Ohio? Uh, <laughs> well, life is quiet these days. Um, it's weird, you know, it's, uh, since I was little, my basketball took so much of my life and away from the family and my parents and the kids when I grew up. So when it stops, it's funny because it stops like you finish playing and that's it. There's no more practices to go to. There's no more planes to catch. And there's no more weights to live. There's like you can do it on your own if you want, but nobody will scream or tell you what to do. And the hardest part for me was is I wasn't part of the structural environment anymore where before I was told where to go, where to be. It was all time to a minute, and I was really good at it. That was thanks to my mom, because she was... <laughs> so I thrived in the structural environment. It was really good for me. And when I retired, there was none of that. It was my wife, who is great, and my kids, who are great too. But, you know, they live their own lives, and, and you kind of have to fit in where you fit in and figure out, you know, you can't play golf every day. You can't. So uh, it's been a learning experience, but... Uh, it's been peaceful mentally for me. Um, I enjoyed it. Uh, being bored sometimes is not the worst things. People look at it as it's cancerous. I'm like, so what? So you go read a book? Like, it's okay. My life has been so hectic for so long that sometimes if I do have a downtime, which is not a lot with two boys, I do enjoy it. Um, you know, I enjoy being a father. I go to all their games, I go to all their practices, uh, I coach some of their teams, which is hard for me <laughs> to step back from that. Uh, <laughs> you know, I um, spend a lot of time with my wife, we would travel together a lot, which is so important for the kids. And so, you know, I enjoy life. I miss basketball, I miss the guys, I miss the competition. Uh, and now I don't think they'll always go away, but, um, you know, life is life. This is the next chapter, and, and you move on. But uh, you know, the memories stay with you. Finally, you're going to join a new team there with those, with with your jersey in the rafters, with the likes of Austin Carr and Mark Price. So uh, that's a team with you'll be with forever, Z. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> my youngest one asked me the other day. He goes, "Well, you're gonna." He can't understand the jersey hanging. He's like, "He said, well, how long is it gonna be there?" I'm like. Well, it's just going to be there forever. He goes, really? He goes, even when you die? I go, yeah. I go, it's just what happens. So, and it never hit me till then. I'm like, well, it's, you know I mean? It's, it's, it's permanent. It's part of the history. And uh, to be that fortunate to know the road that I had to take, which wasn't the easiest road. And uh, I think the most gratifying thing for me, it's, it's the church is great and everything else, but the relationships that I made throughout the year with people, uh, and more importantly, like I found a home, a new home. You know, I left uh, Lithuania, I was 20 years old. I was just a kid, I was 20 going on 15. I was immature, like I was not, like today's kids are much more mature than I was. You know, I was, I lived with my mom and dad, I was protected, I would play basketball, I haven't seen much of the world. So just take take that road through all the ups and downs and, and, and arrive with the uh, retirement jersey and, and, you know, have the, have the place that I can call home. I think that was like my family. I'm raising my family. I'm living my life here. So that's that was more important. Well, that's uh, that's that's all part of it, Z. That's why that jersey is going to be there forever. Well, I, I should ask you, number eleven was that just assigned to you? Or was that a number of meaning to you uh, when uh, when you got it? You know, I played number nine in Lithuania as number eleven was taken. Uh, it was part of the history in Lithuania. It was kind of if you were center, you. Were, given the number 11. Part of it was because all the good centers that we had, including Sabonis, played with that number, so it was almost like passing the torch. Uh, and when I got here, you know, when they asked me, just, it's a cool number, it makes sense. And that's Andy's number, Andy won. He said he would have worn it if it wasn't there when he came in, because he wore number 11 coming through. So it's, uh, just thought it was a good number. Um, but. 
there was no necessarily special meaning behind it. Now it is. <laughs> a couple of things then, I, you know, to touch on, Z. Yeah. When you look back on your life, what would you like people to say about your life as a whole? As a basketball player or as a person? What, what, what would you like people to know of you when they say, they talk about Zydrunas Jogalskis, and like, what would you like people to say about you? Um, that's a tough question. Uh, I think that I was a good person, um, took my craft seriously, um, treated people like I wanted to be treated, admitted my mistakes when I was wrong and learned from them, which is more important. Um, I think more than basketball player, the more of accomplishment, if they would say that I succeeded as a husband and as a father, when it's time to go, that would mean more than a basketball player. Basketball is just a small part of my life. Great, and I enjoyed it, but you know, I'm only 38, so hopefully <laughs> I have more time left and there are more chapters to bring down and kids to be raised, so that's, that's my main focus. All that history, that, so now all the mom's part will come in now, yeah. right, all that learning. Another thing, too, and I, and I really do want to ask it in the uh, kind of missed it, I guess, but the fans, Z, you've had this connection with the fans, I think almost from day one here. What would you like to say to those fans uh, of you and of the Cavaliers? Thank you, you know, thank you from my heart. It's just, you know, the fans were one of the main reasons why I kept fighting back. Um, people, you know, from the first day, like, when I landed in Cleveland for the first time, like, there was a Lithuanian, Cleveland Lithuanian community meeting me, you know, they took me, I wanted to go to a hotel because I was tired, but they dragged me to, the, to their uh, facility. And then, you know, people that I met throughout my life living here, you know, not like people know, but I lived downtown for a long time, three, four years, you know, before I moved to the suburbs. So um, all the friends that I made, I mean, I have so many friends. There's has nothing to do with basketball from all corners of my life. Um, just, uh, you know, I think it was the right fit at the right time. Uh, the city has a lot of Eastern European influences, a lot of Polish people, a lot of Lithuanian, a lot of Ukrainian, Slovenian. So seeing one of their own, come here and, you know, and be able to play, you know, if you can't play, it wouldn't matter, but being able to play to a degree and be successful, I think that helped. Uh, just think the way I carried myself and, you know, this is not a city where you come in pumping your chest or, try, you know, like I always tell guys, like, this is different here, here. this is not LA and different in the positive way I go. You have to work hard, you have to play hard. People will accept losing to some degree if they see you trying and things get better, but they will not accept hard dogging and, and not playing hard, not working. I said, this is not gonna work. I said, because people go to factories, they have life, like they have hard lives. So, so they're not gonna see kids making millions of dollars not trying. So that is what I played I always used to, you know, used to tell guys, that this is, you know, this is a great city. I said, but they will hold you accountable you cannot be fake in the city. You got to be true to yourself, and I think they appreciated that. You know, when I missed a shot or, or whatever, it wasn't the end of the world, or I had a good game or bad game. I would always come back with the same energy and the same effort the next night. Uh, you know, I mean, I've been thrown out of so many games. Like I said, I'm not a. Yeah, hey, you got the all-time record in that category yeah, too. Yeah, so you know, I wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like a. Uh, you know, Boy Scout by the book, you know, I, I had some rough runs, so, but I think that's all part of the history. They enjoy it, they've seen it, that it doesn't come from a bad place, it comes from a right place, and, you know, I play with emotions on my sleeve, and, you know, but bottom line, I tried the hardest, and they were always, always very, very rewarding, whether, you know, on the streets or anywhere else, you know, uh, millions of times, how is your feet, how, no matter how sick or tired I was with that, and, whether it's helping with one thing, helping with another thing, it's just, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a really, really, really good fit. I, uh, I came in here almost looking for home because I knew if I was a successful basketball player, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm not going to live in Lithuania for a long time and my life is going to change. I'm going to have to move on. And I found a home and um, the home is 
not only for me now, for my kids and my wife and my family. So it's just, uh, that's a good ending. Well, I'll see, I started out our conversation congratulating you. I'm going to do that again as we conclude tonight. And, and it's very fitting. Anyone that has really seen you play, maybe listen to us talk today to know that no one else for the Cavaliers should ever wear number 11 again. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike.